everyone, I'm Ashley Jones and I am here to talk to you about continuous quilting with your embroidery machine. So I'm um, here on behalf of Eileen. Uh, she is working on some other things in the office. She's super busy, so I'm filling in for her today. You'll see her again next week. Um, and I am excited to talk to you about quilting with your embroidery machine. It's actually one of my favorite topics, I think, because so many people think that it is so hard to do, but it is super easy. Um, and so I am excited to share with you. And we really are able to stitch outside of our um, machine limits by connecting these quilting designs in a continuous line. So that's what we're talking about today. And we're going to be using the Snap Boot Monster. Um, I saw before we even started, we already had some people joining saying that they've been using their Snap Boot Monster all week. I think that was Retha Ranke. Thanks for joining, Retha. She's a, um, a frequent flyer here. Um, and so do you guys have a snap hoop monster? This quilting technique is one of um, the best uses of snap hoop monster. Not that it, there are not other good uses, but I tell you, it's the one thing that I would never attempt without my snap hoop monster. So um, I see that Paula says uh, she has one, but she's never used it. Paula, you got to get that thing out and use it. You're going to love the presentation today. It's so easy uh, to move move um, things around within your magnetic hoop, um, especially with something like quilting where we have to re-hoop a ton. So, uh, and then Pat uh, Coswell says her too. So Pat, get it out, get your hoop out. You guys are going to love this. So um, what about quilting with your embroidery machine? Have you um, ever quilted a quilt with your embroidery machine? Or maybe not a quilt, maybe something smaller. Um, and so tell me in the chat, have you um, uh, quilted with your embroidery machine? It's definitely one of my favorite things to do. So, um, and I just wanted to give a shout out to everybody that's joining. We have people from all over as usual. I love seeing all of the states represented. So um, Pat from North Carolina. Um, we've got Carol from Pennsylvania. Um, we've got, um, looks like Kathy from New Jersey. Um, Awana, uh, maybe Awana Stark um, from Ohio. That's a very um, cool name. And Montana, Northern California, and so many different places. So uh, Dawn from Virginia. So thanks for joining Dawn. She's over at Creative Applique. Um, and uh, Washington State, my old stomping grounds up there outside of Tacoma. Sue Brown, thanks for joining, Sue. Uh, Sue uh, is always a help with um, teaching our projects that we have uh, with our on-the-house design, and I know she also teaches our software. She's a, a, an amazing um, uh, software instructor. So, um, and then Bet Cooley, my friend from uh, Arizona. Thanks for joining, Bet. And so, New Mexico, Texas, uh, Rochelle from Virginia. Um, oh my gosh, so many people. Oh, from UK. Thank you, Carol, from join for joining. Um, and then Paula from Yuma, Arizona. We've got Georgia. So, hi everyone. Um, and so, quilting with your embroidery machine. So, Eileen planned uh, to talk to you guys and give you tips on quilting with your embroidery machine using your snap poop monster. Um, and this technique really is a beginner technique all the way to advanced. So I'm going to share the basics of quilting with your embroidery machine, just in case you guys have never done it. If you've got some, if there are some viewers out there that have never even attempted it, never seen a demonstration. So I'm going to um, kind of start with the very basics. And then I also have some tips for um, success as well. So, um, and you can do this technique with a whole cloth quilt or um, if you have a quilt that you've pieced, um, it can be done for placemats. It can be done for quilted fabric for um, if you're doing like a jacket or a vest or a bag. There are so many uses for your quilted fabric um, besides quilts. But of course, we love our quilts too, right? So um, let's uh, start with the basics. And then I'm actually going to stitch at my machine today and show you um, exactly how to... Um, connect your designs and do that stitching. And I have some tips over there. So quilting with your embroidery machine, it is super easy. The first thing you need a sandwich. So, well, a quilt sandwich. You, I mean, you may want to start with a sandwich uh, for a snack, but you uh, definitely want to have a quilt sandwich. So that is your quilt top with the batting and the backing, because we're actually going to quilt through all three layers using this technique. 
Um, and then you want to choose a design. So a quilting embroidery design. So this is a design that your embroidery machine would recognize. And it is a run stitch design. There are tons of them out there. We have some in our different software programs. Um, Eileen's written books over the years that are quilting that have these designs in them. Many different places to get quilting designs, but these are run stitch designs um, for quilting with your embroidery machine, but it's a, a machine file. And then I recommend printing a template. Um, if you don't have the ability to uh, print a template, I definitely recommend um, downloading our free embroidery tool shed software because it will print an embroidery design actual size for you. And that template I think makes it much more efficient um, because I can get my template placed quickly to get uh, rehooped to the correct spot. And then um, I do recommend basting your quilt sandwich. We like to use just quilting basting pins. Um, they are easy to remove at the embroidery machine because um, we have to remove them before we stitch. So when you figure out the next area that you're about to stitch, you can um, remove those uh, pins easily. Now um, I'm going to be using a jelly roll quilt today. So um, if you've ever done that jelly roll race, is that not fun? If you don't know what that is, Google it when we're done here today. Um, it is a very quick quilt top from a jelly roll and it makes like a lap size uh, throw and it stitches in like an hour. You can make a quilt top in like an hour using that uh, method. So have you guys ever done a jelly roll uh, race quilt? So I think there are a lot of fun. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Now, after you get your quilt sandwich and you've got it basted, you are ready to head to the embroidery machine and then you're going to hoop your quilt sandwich like you see here in this image. And once you've got it hooped and on the embroidery machine, you are going to line up and stitch your design. So once you've stitched your design, you are then going to repeat five and six. You're going to hoop again and stitch again, hoop again and stitch again. So it seriously is that easy. Now, uh, the design that I'm going to be using is this cute little happy flower design. It's just a quilting design that we have here at D Dime. It comes from our My Quilt Embellisher, uh, our quilt uh, planner software program, and um, it stitches in like about three minutes. I resized it the size that I needed to fill uh, the hoop that I'm working on. And if you guys have questions on planning the layout, I can uh, also talk about that for you as well. But I first want to show you the process over at my machine and we're going to talk about uh, connecting those designs and using the template and then how do I stay straight in the hoop? So um, so things like that. If you've got questions along the way, um, the, the, the comments uh, go really fast sometimes. So put three or so question marks before you start typing a question and then it'll be easy for me to pick out of the, um, the list of questions so that I can make sure that I get them answered for you. But if you have questions, uh, let me know. Um, um, and for now, let me head over to my um, embroidery machine and I'm give you some tips over there. So um, we can, we're going to bring my machine um, camera up on screen and I will see you over there. So now I already have my Snap Hoop Monster base here. The top of the magnetic hoop is, is sitting on the other side of my embroidery machine. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to attach this to the machine uh, before you put your quilt down. To me, this is the easiest way. I always like to wind several bobbins that are the same color thread that I'm using on top or a coordinating or blending thread, but as long as it's the same weight. So I'm actually using one of Dime's uh, vintage embroidery threads. It's an embroidery thread that has a matte finish, so it's perfect for quilting. So I like to wind several bobbins just so I'm ready to go. I've got one already loaded in my machine, and then I've got two here that are, uh, are ready to stitch um, if I need them. So I'm just going to place those up here. I don't lose them. Um, and I've already got my machine threaded with that matching thread. Now you don't have to have the ex same exact color, but I do recommend the same weight of thread in the bobbin and up top um, because it's going to balance your stitches out. So we're going to attach just the base of our hoop. And so this is our snap hoop monster. And so I'm just attaching it to my embroidery machine the same exact way that I do my um, regular hoop, but only I have the base here and that's it. So I'm going to 
attach that. And now I've already um, arranged my quilt um, and I have it set up um, and ready to, uh, to basically get stitching. So I'm going to put my quilt in position. Now you can see as I slide this over, a template is coming into view. Now I'll talk about printing this template this large, and I'll talk about planning the layout if, um, if you guys are interested in uh, seeing that. So I've got this template. This is the actual size of my design, and I have placed it where I want to start uh, quilting. So I'm going to take my magnetic top frame and put that down over my template. And now I can fill my magnetic hoop under here. So I can get this perfectly lined up. Now, some tips here. This is um, the first place that we're going to quilt our quilt sandwich. Um, and so to get it into position, now I figured out where I wanted to start um, on my quilt. And I'll uh, explain that over back at my PowerPoint. But I basically marked the center of my quilt, both vertical and horizontal. Um, I want to start close to the center and then work my way out. And we'll, we'll see that a little bit more in detail. But this template has this huge crosshair on it. So I can actually move my quilt sandwich and get it pretty much close to uh, the needle part there. And so then I know I'm close to the center of my hoop. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect because I can move my needle. But now, hey, look, the nice thing about a jelly roll quilt is all of these lines, these uh, horizontal lines, give me the ability every time I move my hoop to Let's just double check here. I just want to make sure that I am still on the screen. There we go. Okay. Much better. <laughs> okay. So somebody tell me what was the last thing that you um, heard? So it looked like we were having some, some difficulties there with the, the camera. And so tell me if, tell me what you missed. So the camera was frozen. So I see that. So I think we're back up and running. You can see my hand moving under there, I think. Okay, so let me just back up a little bit. So basically, I had this template all um, on my um, quilt, and I chose where to put that based on um, my quilt size. I marked the center and figured out where I wanted to start quilting and have my template up there. So, um, and then Michelle says, when you were uh, bringing the template over. Okay, so I'll back up. Let me um, remove this. So this is my magnetic top frame. So I already had my uh, quilt template in place and I'm going to tell you how I decided where to get that. But I've got some slides that'll show that really well over at my um, uh, my PowerPoint over there. But what I like to do is when I place my template, I can actually center it under the needle um, just by moving my quilt around before I ever even put that magnetic top frame on. Does that make sense? And then I know that I'm pretty close to the center of my hoop. So hopefully that makes sense there. And then I can make minute adjustments because this is magnetic. I can lift it and then uh, just kind of slightly adjust my quilt. So what I am doing, so because this is a jelly roll quilt, Quilt. The jelly roll quilt uh, with these um, horizontal strips makes it really easy to get my quilt perfectly straight or, you know, horizontally straight in the hoop. Um, and I'm going to use my template to help me get lined up uh, centered vertically. So right now uh, I've got the um, seam between these two strips here two red strips. I've got that on my zero of my centering guides here on my hoop, just like that. And so I know that I'm vertically straight. I can also see at the bottom of the hoop here, the um, strip hanging out and it looks like pretty even. 
all the way across. So I'm happy with that. Now, if you're not dead on center here, what you can do is if you lower your foot, you can actually see through the, oh, oh I see it happened again. So hopefully this is not going to keep happening. So hang on one second. There we go. Let me start another. Let me move that uh, over. Change that camera. See if this fixes it. There we go. It just doesn't like hanging out on that camera. Okay, so I've lowered my foot here and um, I can see through the opening of my foot that it's like almost spot on. But one thing that you can do to check, if you don't have these beautiful seams on your quilt, maybe you're doing a whole cloth quilt, um, and so you can use your machine features so you can watch how I can make my uh, foot move, and so it's checking that uh, seam uh, right up the center there, and if I push the opposite setting on my machine it is scrolling down to the bottom and I am just slightly offset so either my template um, or my hooping but either way I'm going to slightly adjust um, and then I can go back to the center there and I think that looks great and then you can also do that left to right so if I go left I can check my uh horizontal alignment there just like that oh and that looks really nice so I'm gonna just just a smidge pull that up okay so now that we're lined up your template is helping you get lined up now the next thing you're gonna do is remove this don't stitch through this template or um, you'll be disappointed when you have to pick it all out so just grab from the back and pull it forward um, and then we're ready to uh, stitch. I usually just set my template aside because we're going to use it again. Now, I like to double check that all my quilt is out of the way here. Um, everything feels nice on all of the edges. And so now I'm just going to lower my foot and we're going to let it stitch. So this design says that it takes uh, just three minutes to quilt. And then I'm going to show you how to line it up with the next one. So, um, so if we have any questions, so what size hoop? So while this is stitching, I'll answer your question. So stitching with Sue says what size hoop? Now this particular one is a nine and a half by 14 uh, stitching with Sue, but you can certainly use other um, size hoops and make sure your design fits within the hoop. So it really depends on what you're working on. Um, um, and hey, there's Leanne Babin. Hey, Leanne, thanks for joining. So it's been a while since I've seen her. Um, and then uh, hopefully it's, it looks like it's uh, moving now. I see the comments about the camera frozen. So hopefully we're good for for that now. And then uh, Terry says, is your template adhesive? It actually is, Terry. I printed on Dimes print and stick target paper. Um, the You can stitch a template if you want or um, uh, print one like I did on regular copy paper or either print on our print and stick. The nice thing about it being adhesive is that as I'm doing the hooping, the template is not moving around. I know that it's exactly where I placed it. So um, so the one I'm using is definitely um, uh, adhesive. And then where can you find running stitch patterns, Julie says. So Julie, there are tons of embroidery uh, designs that are um, available. If you look up um, embroidery quilting designs on the internet, there are tons of people. We have some um, in our software. Um, also, Eileen has a book. Oh, it just froze again. Um, and so, loves to go back to my face. So let's switch that again. Um, here we go. It'll come back up and it's just stitching. Uh, but there are tons of places that you can just purchase embroidery designs. A lot of them have quilting designs for embroidery machines as well. So just uh, give a search and you'll probably be able to uh, find something. Um, and they save in all, you know, formats for all kinds of embroidery machines. So, um, and then uh, Betty uh, Garner Schroeder says, do you need to pull up your bobbin thread with the first stitch? I do not, Betty. I just let it stitch. My embroidery machine, most of these designs tie a knot as you're getting started. And so the um, the bobbin thread gets pulled up then and it gets trimmed by the machine when it stops. So I don't pull it up, but you certainly can. Some people like to because it reduces the knot size. Um, so that's really a personal preference there. 
And then Mitzi says, uh, could you make your design bigger or is this design the biggest you should have in this size hoop? So I could make it bigger and I'll actually show you why I chose the size that I chose. And, um, and that way you can um, kind of have that same uh, bit of knowledge about what would be the best size for you to choose. So I'm just going to grab that, move that. I see that uh, running over there. Um, and then, oh, thank you, Kathy, doing good in spite of the camera. <laughs> it always happens when you're on live that things go crazy. This has been working uh, great all day. Um, and so um, Kathleen Queen says, do you use embroidery thread, not 50 weight? the thread in your bob, what thread in your bobbin. So I use um, any thread that I normally would run in my embroidery machine, Kathleen. So I have quilted with my regular um, embroidery thread that has that shiny finish to it. I've embroidered or I've quilted with um, a uh, matte finish thread, which is what I have now that looks more like a, your quilting cotton thread, um, but it's actually a polyester thread. Um, you could quilt with a variegated thread, any machine in, or even a, a metallic thread, any thread you can run in your embroidery machine. For the bobbin, I usually like to match the thread weight. Um, I don't always match the colors although this one I did match the colors but I did not match the colors um, I don't do that every time so you could match the colors if you want but at least match the weight because it'll balance your stitch um, and then uh, Raja says uh, can you use the magnetic hoop with Bernina yes you can I heard it's not easy for Bernina to identify this hoop um, and so I know we have lots I don't own a Bernina um, but I know we have lots of uh, users that have Berninas that love our snap hoop monster and we do make uh, the hoops for Bernina. So, um, so yeah. And Jennifer Alexander, thanks for joining Jennifer. She's also a frequent flyer. She says quilted with metallic thread um, in, and in the bobbin. I agree. I love that for holiday quilts. It's perfect. So, um, and then Louise says the sandwich is the entire quilt. It sure is. And so I created um, a quilt sandwich for this entire uh, quilt here. Um, and so now we have stitched one design. You can see that quilt on that light color there and so I'm ready to move it and this is going to be hard to show on the camera with this busy printed fabric but I can also show it um, under my overhead here so um, so do you need to keep moving the hoop and the answer Louise is yes you do we're about to move it to the next location so what I like to do is I usually let me move my bobbins here and close the head of my machine I usually lift this and just slide it over the head of my machine um, if your hoop is large enough and then I just move my quilt to the next location so I'm going to slide this over and now I'm going to have to remove these that are in the location of the next stitch out and uh, we're going to get our template to line up and I'll kind of zoom in and see if I can uh, um, gosh grave this is a challenging uh, <laughs> set of stitches for even me to see uh, much less the camera and so basically what I'm doing um, and it looks like it didn't trim so let me pull that off so I am uh, needing to line up this point here with what's already stitched on the, the uh, quilt. And if I can get this template lined up and I can center it here, then when I start stitching, I know that they'll be connected, but I can also check that just to make sure. So what I do, and like I said, I know it's hard to see my stitches. This is a busy printed uh, fabric, so lesson learned here. Um, and so I'm gonna place this template down and I'm linking up the point where it finished stitching with the point of this uh, particular um, template here. And I can use the seams on my, uh, my quilt here to make sure that I am uh, straight across the, the seams here, okay? And then this is where the next design needs to stitch. So I just slide this under and I usually start by positioning it under the needle. That gets me like as close as possible. And then I'm going to put my magnetic top frame down. And uh, like uh, you guys pointed out, I could have made a bigger design here, but um, I'll show you over on um, uh, my computer why I chose uh, this size design. So I'm going to go ahead and remove a couple of more pins um, just because they're under the edge of my hoop here. So that's why I love these pins. They're just regular uh, basting pins um, and uh, they're just easy to remove right at the embroidery machine. So, 
and there's my snap hoop monster doing its uh, uh, beautiful thing that it does. It holds my quilt sandwich uh, beautifully and I can reposition as needed. Okay, so now um, my seams on my quilt are, are straighter than my template. So my template, I didn't get it perfectly straight, which is fine. Um, but I would rather make sure that the seams are uh, straight in my hoop. Um, and then the template, I can always make adjustments to. So I didn't place it down perfectly straight. So I'm going to make sure I've got the six here and the six here with this light colored strip. That just makes sure I'm horizontally correct. Okay, is that making sense? Hopefully. And then um, I'm not quite over that center. So I would need to move my uh, position of my design. So you guys are aware of whenever you move uh, this around on your um, machine, it'll move your design to that position. So you can choose your move option. And then you can see how I can kind of scooch that over. And so I'm still going to get it centered, even though I'm not horizontally correct on my template. And I'll show you what I'm going to do to check it. Okay, so I'm in the center of the template. I'm straight here in the hoop. Now I want to check that point way up here in the back. Um, I'm going to check that point to make sure that it matches. So I'm going to advance to stitch number one. And you can see my machine move up there. And then I can actually lower my foot again and then double check. And I'm not exactly on that last stitch where I finished. So what I would do is continue to do that move. So just, you know, nudge the design uh, uh, to make sure that you get it in the right position. So you can use the keys on your machine. But for my machine, I have to go back to zero for it to move. And so what I'm going to do here is just a I can just kind of slide that to that point. Um, and then you can always lower your needle to check. And I needed to move just slightly a little bit more. There we go. Okay. And so now my, uh, my needle is right where that previous stitch ended from the previous design on this side. And I've got it connected over here. So I'm going to lift my foot here. And I'm going to peel that template off again. We don't want to stitch through that. Remember that. And then I usually just stick it to my table and then I'm just going to make sure everything's snug. I always like to double check here to make sure that nothing is tucked underneath. That would be bad, right? And, and now it's ready to start stitching. So if I uh, lower my foot and press go, it'll start right there. And you can see it stitches um, in place a few stitches to tie that uh, knot and then it's going to go on to do that quilting. So isn't that cool? I absolutely love this. It's so amazing what we can do with our embroidery machines. So, um, and then Kathleen Queen asked uh, another question. She said, do we start in the middle of the quilt? Yes, I do recommend starting in the middle. And I'm going to talk about uh, that too coming up here in just a bit. Um, and then Barbara Guerin says, can you tell us the batting brand in the loft? So I tend to use um, something like Warm and Natural. Um, and also um, I have a cotton wool blend um, batting that I use. And then I do have 100% wool that is a high loft that I've also used. So really the brand and the loft, Barbara, is entirely up to you. Um, you can uh, quilt through, um, you know, uh, pretty much, you know, anything. The machine, the quilt uh, is held by the magnetic hoop. Um, and I use a sharp point embroidery needle uh, to make sure that it penetrates those uh, layers easily. Um, and then Wanda says, can you use a regular embroidery hoop? Wanda, you can. I've done that ages ago before I had my snap hoop monster and worked for dime. Um, I will tell you that you're most likely will be taking the entire quilt off of the embroidery machine uh, to get it rehooped each time. Um, and so that's one of the reasons we love our snap hoop monster. We just can move it and we never have to leave the embroidery machine. But absolutely, if that's what you've got and you want to give it a try, do it. I say, uh, don't let it hold you back. Um, and then Jenny Witt says, have you used cuddle backing? Um, does the hoop work well with it? And yes, I have used a uh, cuddle backing and um, it works perfectly fine with the, with the cuddle fabric as well. So, um, and then Carolyn McPherson says, is your template pieced? I see something like a seam horizontally. Carolyn, very good eye. Yes, it is because the printed template was larger than my eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, and so I did have to seam it together and I'll actually show you that as well. 
Um, and then uh, Louise says, would it work better on a single needle or multi needle? Uh, Louise, I have a multi needle embroidery machine and I have quilted an entire quilt on both my single needle and my multi needle. I would say to you, uh, whichever you prefer, um, you, you would definitely be able to do it on either. Um, the one thing about my single needle versus the multi needle, my multi needle, my needles are closer to the hoop. So repositioning um, is, uh, I have to be more careful. It's not that it's difficult or anything. Thing, but I just have to be more careful because the needles are closer to uh, the the uh, fabric. So, um, and um, Cindy, I wish I could do something like this on my Janome. So, uh, Cindy, you could. We don't necessarily have a, a um, snap hoop monster for your Janome fifteen thousand, but you certainly could do that with your your standard hoop. You just might have to take the entire quilt off um in order to uh reposition your hoop so um so yeah and uh we've got some nice comments so nice hoop i definitely agree pat uh coswell says where is the pattern you're using so that is a um you, the pattern for the quilting design is from our my quilt embellisher software if it's the pattern for the quilt i just got a jelly roll and stitched all those rows together um look up jelly roll race um and that's how how I stitch that together and another one is done and then Mary Larson thanks for joining Mary Mary's a frequent flyer too and uh, one of our awesome software users that answers questions on our Facebook group thank you always for your help Mary she said my first machine uh, quilting was your circus cheater quilt that's awesome all the lines uh, were tipsy Terry to uh, so there was nothing to line up the design it was a good learning experience so I'm glad that you enjoyed that so that's awesome to hear um, okay so the next design is done so I'll do one more um, and we'll talk through the process again because getting to the edge of my quilt I have another tip for you so now I've got another spot quilted it looks gorgeous I love this and so I'm going to take my magnetic hoop and then I just lift it and place that over the head of my embroidery machine. And then I'm going to grab my template again. And I am going to, again, on my template, I'm going to line up this uh, particular point with the last point that stitched on the design, which is the opposite side there. So if I slide this over again, I know it's hard to see with this busy printed fabric, but that last stitch stitched right there. So I can link up my template with my stitch design and then I'm going to stick this down to my fabric and so I specifically sized this design you can see how I end right at the edge here I don't have to worry about my design stitching off of my quilt so I'm going to this time check my seams here and again I wasn't straight with my template so I'm just going to loosen i'm going to leave that point connected up there so that i don't uh, shift that too much but then just adjust my template so that it's straighter across the seam there there we go and then now i'm going to slide this underneath and line up the center with my needle now a lot of people have um, embroidery machines that have some very amazing features on them that allow you to line up your designs and this machine does have some of those and i will tell you I sometimes use uh, my camera, my projector to spot check, um, but I have to say 90% of the time I use this template like this because it's so much quicker. I can position this. I don't have to scan what's in the hoop. Um, and then this uh, is easier to, um, a quicker to position. Okay. So I want that to be here, but look what's happening. I'm out of fabric over here on the side. So when you are quilting with your embroidery machine, you want to leave extra batting and backing just like I've done here. I've got, um, I'd say that's maybe like three inches there. Um, and it's for this very reason. So we need to quilt um, up to the edge of our quilt, but there would be no, nothing for my hoop to grab onto. So I like to make sure I have extra um, for this reason. Now, even though I'm not in the center because I have run out of fabric for my hoop to attach to, but I can still move my design over there. Now, um, with my features on my embroidery machine, I'll choose the move and I'll just move it over to that center. It kind of took off there and I'll get that back. If you lower your foot, you can kind of see a little bit better um, down in the foot to get that in the center. So I just use those jog keys. Oh, I see that it dropped off again. So here, here comes my, uh, <laughs> my, my face again. So let's get back to that camera one more time. We're almost done here. So this should hold out this time, hopefully. 
There we go. It should come up here in a second. There we go. Okay. So whoops. Uh, so thank you guys. You guys are so patient. I think you guys are awesome. Okay. So now I have uh, basically centered it over my template again. Um, and now I'm going to do the same thing. Just check my seams. And so I can't see this seam because of my template. So I'm going to peel that back. And right now I'm at the two and the two. And so I think that that's great. Um, so I know that I'm horizontally straight in the hoop. Okay, and I'm centered there. So now I'm going to advance to stitch number one and double check that point up there. Okay, so now I'm a, a little bit off on that connection point up here. And so what I'm going to do is just lift my uh, hoop and then just slightly move my fabric until I get that lined up. And then you can always drop your needle to check that point. And I think that that might do it here. So let's do that. Yep, I love that one. Perfect. Okay, so now that is literally stitched right through my template there. So I'm going to pull that out so I can remove my template. Now I could um, go back to the center, but really um, it, I just went to stitch number one. So it's ready to tie that knot. So I'm just going to leave it there and press my start. So we'll lower my foot. I can double check my placement there and then press go and it'll do that quilting design again. So how cool is that, right? And now I've got a shot of my setup here to give you some tips about uh, supporting the quilt um, and also um, other tips for um, placing your template, uh, that first uh, location, marking your quilt. And then uh, I'll show you how I um, plan the layout there. So that's looking great. Okay, so any questions about that? So the, um, this will be the last one and, and I'll show you the rest on the, the, uh, the PowerPoint slides. I've got pictures. So Deborah, Thanks for joining us, Deborah. And so Deborah says readjusting the placement um, is the beauty of Snap Hoop Monster. I totally agree because we'd have to take the entire thing off if we um, had our standard hoop. And I'm not saying if you don't have a Snap Hoop Monster and you want to quilt with your embroidery machine, I totally recommend it. Um, and so don't let that hold you um, from or prevent you from doing it because it's uh, it's so fun and it's so rewarding when you quilt your entire quilt um, and then you're all done. Uh, it is so rewarding to, to do that on your boarding machine. So, okay. So I'm going to head back around uh, while that is stitching. Um, and uh, we'll see a few more tips here um, on my, my slides. And I also have the, the templates to, to show you as well. So, okay. So um, let's go back to uh, my PowerPoint here. Perfect. And uh, so we're, we're, um, we went through all of these steps, but now let me give you some tips. So this is how I figured out um, where to start quilting. So I used our My Quilt Planner program and I can uh, show you guys that. You don't have to do this. You can literally just find the center of your quilt and start quilting um, and move your design accordingly. Your last couple of designs may hang off the edge, but it's okay. It's no big deal. It'll stitch onto that batting and backing. You're going to cut it off anyway. But for me, I use our My Quilt Planner to plan the quilt. So when you start quilting with your embroidery machine, you want to start in or near the center. In this case, what I did was I took my jelly roll uh, quilt top, I folded it in half, both uh, um, horizontal and vertical, and I marked the center. And then I knew where I wanted to stitch my first design. So I like to start close to the center. Since my center line fell um, in between my two designs there, I placed my template that I printed that has those crosshairs where that point touched and the horizontal line there was right on my center line. And that point that we keep lining up on our design, I actually landed that on my template right on that center seam. You can see that design there that's darker red. So that's exactly how I placed my first template. So I marked my center and then put my template down based on my center marking. So um, after that, I 
plan to quilt a quadrant. So this is how I like to do it. I know Eileen does a quadrant at a time too. Um, so we generally will start in that center design and then work out to the edge. So I've already done these three. The last one is stitching that you guys saw um, me uh, prepare. And then I would move up to the next row and start in that center one and then work my way out and again with the top row. And then you finished one entire quadrant. Now you do not have to work out to the right. You could also work up if you want. So when you place that first design, you're gonna work up from each of them um, as you work that quadrant. So it's really up to you. And honestly, sometimes your quilt will determine. Um, those seams, I have those uh, horizontal seams on my jelly roll quilt. So I naturally wanted to move across to the right. But if you've got blocks that are giving you vertical and horizontal seams, you might wanna move up. So it's really dependent, there's no, wrong way to do it. And so um, that is the, you know, how I place the first template. Now, this is the setup that I'm working with over there that you can't see because the cause camera is zoomed in. It's very important to support your quilt. Um, we use the weightless quilter um, and the weightless quilter tabletop. And actually here in this picture, this is a combination of both. So the weightless quilter is a floor frame um, and my table that my machine sits on is fixed. I cannot get underneath it. So I used for that back right corner, one of our weightless quilter tabletop um, uh, option to hold that other corner there. But that's the setup that I'm working with there. Um, it's the quilt is supported. You don't want quilt drag. Now, some of this I've mentioned whenever I was over at the machine, use a sharp point embroidery needle. And by sharp point, I don't just mean not dull. I mean an actual sharp. Those sharp needles, the sharp point has a smaller footprint and it pierces those three layers of your fabric much easier, making sure that you're forming stitches perfectly. So a sharp point needle. And then I definitely recommend winding a couple of extra bobbins. And usually after, you know, about, you know, six or so of a design this size, I will check my bobbin and see how low it is. When it's getting pretty low, I just go ahead and change it. You don't want to change in the middle of a run stitch. If you have to back up, um, you'll most likely notice that if your uh, fabric is not uh, super busy. Now mine, you could see that my fabric is so busy. You can't really see, see even the stitching, which, you know, that uh, is definitely something that I like from time to time. So, so those are some um, extra tips for, for getting that, um, that uh, stitch. So and then I see there's a couple of other questions there. So uh, Georgette says, is it possible to quilt a king size quilt using this technique? And the answer is yes, Georgette. Um, you can quilt a quilt king size quilt on your embroidery machine. The biggest thing to remember is the throat space of your embroidery machine. So look at that picture on the screen right now. I'm in the center of my quilt or almost to the center. And you can see I have just a small roll on the right um, between my hoop and the, the uh, throat of the machine. So when you are working with a king size quilt, you want to start again in the center and then work your way out. So when you're toward the center, you're going to have a really large roll. So you have to have a machine that will support that larger uh, roll, but it absolutely uh, can be done. So, um, and then Donna says, how do you get your pattern to match the new start since you don't have that starting point. So um, I do have uh, that starting point by using my template. So I line up the points on my template. And then when I advance to stitch number one, I can check with my needle to make sure that it ends because this design that I'm stitching, it starts on the left. So when I advance to stitch number one, that stitch goes right to the left side of the machine there. So um, so hopefully that, that helps uh, answer that question there. So, and Laurie, thanks for joining. Joining Laurie Albrecht. She's one of our um, uh, educators that teaches lessons on our software and she also stitches a lot of samples for us. And so um, she said the king size one is just needed extra support. Um, so I use the tabletop holders to hold the midpoints um, in between the weightless frame. So Laurie's saying that she did something similar to what I did here where she used her weightless quilter and the weightless quilter tabletop to support those midpoints. So, but she's saying that yes, she's done a king size quilt on her embroidery machine. 
machines. So I love that. So, um, and uh, Louise says, what are those uh, things holding up the quilt? So that's our weightless quilter and our weightless quilter tabletop. It's two different products, um, but hey, this is actually the perfect example of why it is nice to have um, all the tools that you could possibly have because sometimes they really work well together. So, um, so that's the weightless quilter, the one where you can see the poles coming from the floor. And then the back right is the weightless quilter tabletop. It actually attaches to the table. So because I couldn't uh, get underneath. So and then Leanne says, I have the weightless quilter, but unfamiliar with the tabletop weightless quilter. So, so Leanne, the weightless quilter tabletop is the same concept. It attaches to your table with a C-clamp. And it uh, um, is really for working for quilts that are, say, smaller than 54 inches. Um, and then uh, if it's larger than 54, I definitely like to use my weightless quilter. Um, but here you can see they work really well together. So and we've got Facebook user here. So not sure the name, but do you uh, just turn the quilt upside down to the left and the bottom quadrants? That's exactly what you do. When you're done quilting the right half of your quilt, you flip it around so that the unquilted portion is under the needle. That's exactly what you do. Um, and I did notice that our team here put some links in for the weightless quilter and the weightless quilter tabletop into the chat. Um, you could click on those to see more about those. Um, but really support your quilt. It's very important. If it drags, it will um, pull on your hoop. It'll pull against the needle and could possibly break a needle or either um, make your stitches not really formed very well. So make sure that you are supporting the quilt. That's very important. Um, and actually, before we go on to that, let me head over to the software and I'll show you my planning. Um, so this is our um, My Quilt Planner software. Now, you do not have to have this software, but it gives me a visual and it also allows me to share this visual easiest easy with you. Now, um, I actually brought in an image. So I took a photograph. I'm going to darken it up so you could see it. So there is my jelly roll quilt that I was working on. I took a photograph of it and I imported it into the software and then I just lightened up the color and I can design right on top of it to see what it's going to look like. Um, and so to use this software, um, I'll show you exactly what I did. And this will also help you understand why I chose that size of design. So in this software, software, the first thing that you do is just uh, answer these questions about your quilt. So my jelly roll quilt was 52 inches um, by 62 and a half. And I, instead of a block size, I had no sashing because I just want to do that quilting all over. And instead of a block size, what I did was entered uh, something that resembled my hoop size. So um, I chose uh, my nine and a half by 14 for my hoop and entered that size there. So notice that gap up here between the first hooping and the top. So that will not get quilted if I leave this by nine and a half by 14. Also, you saw how sometimes I had to move my design around or slightly adjust. I don't like to make a design that is as large as my hoop. I like it to be at least a half size smaller to give me some wiggle room. But I also need this design size to be divisible into my quilt. So I did my design size an 8.6 by a 12.5. Now you can see that went all the way to the edge. Okay. And so uh, this is just the preview color. I'll change that so we can see that on the quilt. And then we want to color our quilt. So this is just um, telling the software to repeat. Now, this is our My Quilt Planner. And again, you do not have to have this software, but it is uh, helpful in designing and planning. You can see that with that exact size that I entered, the 8.6 by 12.5, that will fit in my 9.5 by 14 hoop. It gives me some wiggle room and it also makes my design go all the way to the edge of my quilt without me having to stitch off of the edge or leaving any um, gaps. So I'm going to say OK here. And then I actually used uh, this built in design that is this floral design is the one I was stitching with. And now it's just one design on the screen. And when I put it in any of these areas, it automatically duplicates. And then I just click this button and it fits to the cell. And now that design, that one design, 
is that 8.6 by 12, which is perfectly divisible into my quilt. So I know if I use that size design, I will have, what is this, six across and five down. So 30 hoopings will make uh, my quilt completely quilted. And we started right here in this D3. And so this area right here is where I started. And I quilted D3, E3, and F3, and then I would be working up on that quadrant there. So, and then I would go down just as somebody mentioned, do that lower quadrant. And then I would flip my quilt around um, so that the unquilted portion is under the needle. And then uh, I would start working on this quadrant and then I would do this quadrant here, but that would be flipped around under the needle. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you don't have my quilt planner, you can simply, um, start in the center and work your way out. So maybe um, like if we started here, so here's our true center of the size of the quilt that we're working on. If I draw these lines on here. So if I put my first template right there in the very center, every design after that is still going to link up perfectly fine. But this last design, I probably would have to stitch one more design because this one would be um, in the center. Let me just see if it'll simulate that. So you can kind of see it there. You can see how we have three designs and I've got this portion here. If I start in the center, um, I would just put one more design here. It would stitch partially onto my batting, but that's fine. You could cut it off. But with my quilt planner, I don't have to worry about that. My design is the perfect size to finish right at the edge, which also makes minimal hoopings. But again, you do not have to have my quilt embellisher. Um, it's just a nice way to help plan your quilt. Now, I also imported that picture so that I could see what it looks like um, behind on my quilting. And so I just took a photograph of my full quilt quilt and did the load backdrop feature. So now let me show you the printing and then we'll answer some more questions. Okay. So now over here, if let's, look, Oh, sorry. Something just fell off my table. <laughs> okay. So over here on this uh, quilt here. So to save this, it's really just one design that you're working with. So I'm going to use my export quilt option. And then I'm just going to save this on my desktop in a folder. And I'm just going to call it my test quilt here. So you can see what happens. You want to choose your machine format. Mine was a baby lock. So I have my PES and I click save. And when you click save, it saves the design, this exact design, the right size, and it gives you this PDF. So the PDF also is helpful because it will give you a roadmap. So there's our design and it recommends that you start in D2 and do this top quadrant and then go down to D3 and zigzag down this bottom quadrant. We essentially did that on my quilt, only I started in D3 just simply because that center line that I had drawn on my quilt was easier to start my first template. Um, and so, but close to the center of the quilt and then just work your way out. Out. So to print a template, your design, any design, whether it's ours or some other designers, open it inside of your free embroidery tool shed or either uh, any dime software. And when you choose the print icon, it will print actual size. So you can see this is an 8.6 by 12.5. So it's larger than one piece of paper. So it has divided it into four to print actual size. And then you will tile those together or seam those together. And I'll show you um, exactly what I did uh, to do that. So I'll head over here to my camera. And I actually have this one um, already ready. And so I'll tell you what I did. You can see that this is four pieces of paper. It's our print and stick target paper. And so what I did was I peeled back. Let's see if I can get this to release here. I peeled back. Let me flip it over just a little piece and then used that adhesive on the back of here to actually stick to the template uh, together. So I did this with all four pieces. So I'll undo and show you here. So I can see through our print and stick target paper and I'm linking up my uh, design here. And by just peeling back part of it, it allows me to uh, perfectly position uh, that over top and link up my design just like that. Whoop, I'm off just slightly. And then this gives me a full size template. So 
I can uh, print larger, you know, a design larger than my piece of paper. And now I'm just going to fold that back here. And now what I would do is cut close to the template because remember this point here is uh, what we're checking against that previously stitched point on the other side. So that is my template. That's an 8.6 by 12 and a half size uh, template, which is the exact size of my design. So hopefully that makes sense. So do you guys have any other uh, questions? So Barbara uh, says, what did you say that uh, free software was? So the, the designing software for your quilt is called My Quilt Planner. That one is not a free software, but the embroidery tool shed um, and our team has already put the link to that free uh, software. So the free embroidery tool shed software will print an actual size template of any stitch file that you own. It doesn't have to be our design. It could be any design. So, uh, so download that. It's a great uh, tool. Uh, uh, to use. And then Dawn, thanks for joining John. She says, I have a quilt top with various size of vertical sashing. Is there a way to adjust the sashing size between the blocks? So if you choose uh, the sashing, if I head back over um, here to our quilt planner. So Dawn is asking about the sashing on uh, the quilt here. So if I go back into my quilt settings, um, the vertical and horizontal sashing is uh, what you're going to enter. So if you have, say, like a one inch sashing, it could be one inch vertical and two inch horizontal. Um, but to add um, uh, additional sashing, uh, we don't have that option. What I would do, Don, is import your, port your image and then design right on top of your image. Because even if it's not in these blocks, you can still uh, design right on top of it. Um, but you can adjust the horizontal and the vertical. Now, the borders, you can have multiple borders um, by choosing this index and adding each one for the size. But for the sashing right now, um, maybe that's something we uh, will have to look for uh, an update for the future. Maybe that can be done. Um, and then let's see, do we have any other questions? So Charlotte, thanks for joining Charlotte. She's also another frequent uh, software user over there on our user group. And so she said, how did you determine the size of the hoop? So Charlotte, that was um, from my uh, software planning and I made sure that my uh, design, I wasn't worried about the hoop size. I knew I wanted to use my nine and a half by 14, but I wanted to make sure that the hoop, uh, the design size was divisible into my quilt. So that's what Quilt Planner helped me with. So I just just purchased my quilt embellisher, Mitzi says, and I'm able to do this in the software I purchased. So my quilt embellisher is for uh, creating and uh, uh, custom quilting designs. This planning is only in my quilt planner. Um, and so you can certainly create your quilting designs. You could bring in an image of your quilt, Mitzi and my quilt embellisher. Um, but this grid and this planning is only my quilt planner. Um, and then should the edges be basted down? So Barbara, I don't worry about my edges basted down because I design so that my design doesn't stitch off the edge. But if you are stitching off the edge, um, I just always watch. So, uh, and make sure that it doesn't run off of the, uh, you know, and get caught under the, the quilt top. Um, but you certainly could base those down if you want to do that. That's another good thing to do. So, um, and then Diane says, do you have to save the design after you fit it to the design size? Yes, Diane, you are absolutely correct. Once you fit it, you've created the design size that's equally divisible for your quilt top. And so you definitely want to export. So by exporting, it will save that design the exact size that you're working with. So yeah, that's a really good point. So, um, and then I, I Kirsten, thank you for joining Kirsten. And so Kirsten said, I, Diane, I would, and I totally agree. So thank you for piping up there, uh, Kirsten. So good to see her. Um, I actually think I'll get to see her here in just a little bit. Um, and here, uh, Mary says, can you change the design size if the design isn't C2S? Absolutely, you can change it. And the software does recalculate the stitches. But I will tell you, when you're resizing a run stitch, um, if you resize it larger, it actually will make the distance between your run stitches larger every time you resize it. And if you make it smaller, they'll be really tight. So without re-digitizing a design, there's not a way for the software to keep that distance between the stitching that those designers uh, definitely do. So, 
Okay, so I think I've covered most all the questions. If you have any others, feel free to uh, put that in the chat. But I wanted to share a couple more things with you before we go. So Barbara says, what is C2S? That's a good question, Barbara. I should have said that C2S is a native format to Dimes Embroidery software. And so um, that file format can be read by our software and it remembers you know, all your settings and things like that. Um, but our software also can read and write to all embroidery machine formats as well. So that one's just the native to the software. So I love it. I love all your questions. So, okay. So I'm going to head back over um, to the presentation. I just want to remind you. So if you liked the software portion, um, I do a software Facebook live every uh, first and third Tuesday of the month. And uh, next Tuesday is coming up. I'm talking about word art and stitches, and we're going to create a cute little design in there. And I'm going to give you some tips. So join me for that software success uh, Facebook live next week you will see Eileen here again on Between Friends on Thursday. So Dime has uh, two uh, software, our Facebook lives. Now we have the software success first and the third Tuesday. And Eileen is here every Thursday for Between Friends, which is right where you are today. Um, so if you want to make sure that you're notified for um, our uh, virtual our live presentations, then make sure you like us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel or both. Um, and so here's a short video of uh, how to do that if you're not unsure. We want to make sure you are being notified every time we go live on Thursdays at 1 p.m. And here's a quick tutorial on how you can set up your live notifications. First, on your home page, click on the search button. Look for us. Click on the three little dots on our page. A pop-up will appear. Select on Manage Follow Settings. Click on Live Videos and Enable Notifications. Make sure they're all set to All. Now you're all set! So make sure you subscribe and like, and then you'll get notifications when we go live. Um, and thanks, Jill, for joining. She said that she's uh, stepping out. She had to go. So uh, thanks for, for joining, Jill. She's a good friend. Um, but I see a couple more questions. So let me answer those really quick before we talk about the on the house design for this week. Um, so the first one, uh, Sharon here says, how do you choose between the edge to edge option and the quilt frame um, when you're using both? So after you've, and she's referring to the my quilt planner. When you're planning your quilt, um, here the weightless quilter and edge to edge is an option. So if I am using one design um, that's the same over and over, I use the weightless quilter because it's going to give me idea to uh, quilt in quadrants. The edge to edge method is specific to um, the Amelie Scott designs where she gives you an A and a B and you quilt in columns. So if you are working with a, a design that has an A and a B, I would choose the edge to edge method, but either one will work just fine. Um, and really it's not gonna change your design what that that changes is that PDF um, roadmap to uh, kind of give you a suggested path to quilt. But that's not set in stone. You don't have to do that exactly. And the more you do, you'll kind of uh, kind of get your own kind of groove and rhythm um, and you'll you'll uh, know exactly where you want to go next. So, OK, so really quick before we go, let me share with you the on the house design this week. So what is on the house? Well, that is our free weekly design. And each month at the last uh, Thursday of the month, Eileen has a project associated with on the house design. These are available for a limited time. So if you see them, you like them, you want them, make sure you download them uh, while they are available because the new year happens and we'll start a whole new group of designs. So make sure you share with us your project that you made with your on the house design. Use the hashtag on social media, Dime Sew Along, on the house or exquisite thread. We can find your image and we'll share them here on our Facebook Live. So we have this short little video of some of the designs that have been stitched by our um, awesome viewers and users. So let's take a look.
So this week, our on the house design is this cute, cute, cute hatching chick. So this design has quite a bit of shading. You can see all of the color changes there. Um, the shading is what gives that appeal and that dimension to your embroidery designs rather than just looking like flat stitches. So Deborah Jones says don't chicken out and make sure you use all of the colors to get that perfect shading. So I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation today. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, we really appreciate you being here. And again, I will We'll see you guys on Tuesday if you want to join our Software Success Facebook Live, 1 o'clock Central. Um, and then Eileen will see you on Thursday, 1 o'clock Central, for another episode of Between Friends. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I will see you next time.